Thank you, everyone, for joining me here on Genome HQ. My name is uh, Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And yes, I'm at my uh, palatial estate in Collingwood uh, to present another uh, Genome HQ magical mystery tour. So yeah, oh, Grandma Craw, hello. Yes, hello, Tanya. I hope you all have seen Tanya's fabulous uh, Instagram post. You know, she always does such beautiful drawings and always tries to give like a little clue as to what machine we're going to be talking about. So I will, let's see, without revealing, I got to tip the camera. Oh, Cheryl, perfect timing, Cheryl. Uh, let's see, I will flip this. There we go. So yes, what machine will we be talking about today in Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour? And again, I hope um, you've all seen Tanya's Instagram post. There was a uh, cute little buttons and buttonholes there. So that's a little clue of what we'll be talking about. So, yeah, so how am I today, Cheryl? Oh, I'm doing very good. Again, any day that I can uh, share the Janome love is a good day for me. Oh, I'm glad you got sunshine. Great. Uh, we've got the snow instead. Oh, since it's Leia. Hello, hello. So, Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, and the machine we're going to be talking about today. Ooh, I'll have to move it back. There we are. Woo! The fabulous Janome Soist 721. Now, this is one of our mechanical machines. A lot of the machines that I've been showing so far on Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, you know, oh, we've done like the M7 and the Memorycraft 15,000, the top-of-the-line machine. We've done embroidery machines like the 550E. Oh, we've done long-arm quilting machines like Quiltmaker Pro 18, Quiltmaker Pro 16, the sit-down artistic quilter uh, 16 inch machine. You know, you can go back to the Janome HQ and YouTube channel and watch all of those previous presentations on all of those machines. But I haven't done, other than the very beginning episode, uh, when we kicked off this uh, Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, the very first episode I did uh, that I showed my 28-year-old mechanical machine, which is uh, the predecessor, actually, of the HD 1000. And when I bought my first uh, Janome, again, 28 years ago, that started the love affair between me and Janome, and why I want to now share the Janome love, because I had such a, a fabulous experience with that mechanical machine, a uh, five millimeter uh, needle plate opening. And I was, you know, so happy with that. It was a machine that, again, I studied fashion design at the time uh, that got me through. I, I uh, was able to do whatever I needed to do from that machine. It wasn't a very, you know, sophisticated machine by any means, but a good quality, sturdy machine, again, did all I needed it to do. And then again, that opened the, the floodgates of, uh, of my relationship with Janome. So this machine, this Soist 721 being a mechanical machine as well. Again, we've got uh, knobs instead of all the push button controls. Maybe you're a little intimidated by all the technology and all the bells and whistles and, and beeps and everything. Uh, this mechanical machine, again, we turn it to select. Here we've got all of our stitches. We've got 21 stitches, hence 721. <laughs> so we've got 21 stitches all across the front of the machine here, and they correspond, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and then that corresponds here to the style. So when I want to select, oh, like my um, blind hem stitches, for example, E, N, F, then I would just turn this dial to E and F, or E or F, whatever I want to do, and then boom, I'll be able to do that stitch. Uh, we've got a stitch length uh, dial here, so then again, we can turn it to a really uh, tight stitch, or we could do longer, you know, basting stitches. Or we've got a selection here in the in the darker um, alphabet here, the A through J. These are the stretch stitches. So then we can turn this dial to SS for stretch stitches. And we can do all of... There, maybe that's better. <laughs> then we can do all of these stitches. So again, very simple to do. Overall, Janome machines are very simple and easy to navigate, but these uh, mechanical machines, again, a great 
beginner machine. So again, super easy to navigate, uh, very user friendly. But let's say then, um, again, you're more intimidated with all the bells and whistles and push button controls. You don't want all that technology. This is a great machine. Uh, or again, you're looking for a secondary machine to go travel with, uh, take the classes when eventually the code, uh, COVID restrictions, you know, lighten up and we can start going to classes and retreats. Then maybe this, uh, again, very lightweight, more portable machine would be a good option. Or let's say you are a sewer, you're just going to dabble in sewing. You're not going to you know, uh, be as, as dedicated as, uh, you know, most of us that you just want a machine in order to sew on a button or, you know, the, the seam pops, your hem, you know, pops, and you just want a machine to do those simple hemming and mending, just those simple everyday projects, you know, nothing big. So again, how perfect is, is this? Um, I find it a mistake. A lot of uh, people that uh, first start to get into sew, uh, they, they get like the cheapest machine they can find and the machine ends up, you know, really being a big disappointment and they have, they struggle to use it and, you know, they end up breaking needles and then they throw the machine away or they shove it in the corner and say, well, forget it. I'm not going to take up sewing. So instead, this machine is not a very uh, expensive machine by any means, but instead maybe spend a little bit more than you were initially thinking to get, again, a, still a good quality, sturdy machine, very user-friendly that you're going to have good results with. So then when you do need to fix that hem or so on that button, or do those couple of little projects, you'll always have a good, reliable machine at hand. So uh, again, so many good uh, uses for this machine. So yes, here is what it comes with then. So we've got our, again, very simple, easy to use. So again, this is our stitch selection. This is our stitch length. We've got our reverse button here. Uh, this is my stitch width. So as I turn this dial up here from five, right now it's at center needle position. And then again, this is five millimeter wide. So in the opening of our needle plate, like for our zigzag is five millimeter wide. Uh, we also have other machines that are seven millimeter or nine millimeter. But on this uh, control up here at the top there, this is my stitch width dial. So if I turn this all the way over to zero, then, oh, do you see how my needle is moving this way. So even though, again, this is like a basic machine, we still have some flexibility on where we can move that needle if we want to do a regular seam, but let's say, oh, we want to move the needle a little over to the left to then do some edge stitching or top stitching on that seam, then we can still move our needle over. So we've got some flexibility that way. Uh, just like many of our Janome machines, oh, can you see all those Fabulous markings that help you line up everything, even on your bobbin cover here, right there, there's like the quarter of an inch marking, or again, if you're a garment sewer, there's five eighths of an inch that corresponds to the marks five eighths of an inch. Even when you're ready to pivot your fabric, there's the mark right there on your needle plate that then tells you you're five eighths of an inch from the needle, so you can put the needle in the fabric and pivot. I thought this was very cool. I don't know if it's coincidental or not, but here on the regular, this is our regular A foot, the zigzag foot. Uh, do you see right on this groove here? Oh, it lines up with your quarter of an inch mark here on your bobbin cover, so that's great. There's a little line right across the back of this foot is where you would line up your fabric in order to start sewing your seam. Well, that line on that foot lines up Basically, with this line here of the machine, the plastic portions of the machine, you know, as they come together. And I wonder, was that a coincidence? Or again, did Janome plan that? Because, uh, you know, Janome really does a lot of thinking for us. So I just thought, oh, that's perfect. So that way, you know, that's where you line up your fabric in order to start sewing. So very cool. 
that way. Uh, comes with a lot of basic tools, like again, to clean out our bobbin area there, the little brush, uh, seam ripper, of course, very essential, our little screwdriver. There is one screw right there to remove your needle plate. So as you're getting used to all of these lines on your needle plate, I always suggest to people unscrew the needle plate and, and put it down so you can see more easily. And then you get a little gauge like this. I've had this literally for 30 years, as long as I've been sewing. And again, your Janome dealer probably has one that you can easily pick up. And it's a little measuring gauge, so then you can measure on your needle plate exactly where all those markings are. So again, that you can get more familiar with it. And uh, they come in very handy, these little gauges. Uh, also comes with a little pack of needles here. We've got our blue tip size 11 needle there. The others are other size 11 needles or the uh, 9014s as well, so a little variety pack, and certainly you can always get more needles from your Janome dealer. And then things like, oh yes, the big spool cap, or then I've got the smaller spool cap on because I have a smaller spool of thread here, so I've got my smaller spool cap on. And then again, a bigger one, of course, our extra Janome J bobbins. Uh, again, you can always get more of those from your Janome dealer. And feet like, oh yes, the E foot, the zipper foot. I demonstrated this in previous Janome HQ, uh, the A to Z with Janome series. It's the E foot. And again, it says E. And one thing I love about Janome, regardless of what machine you have, the E foot and your, your zipper foot may look a little different depending on what machine you have. But the E foot is all always the zipper foot. So again, it doesn't matter what machine you have, it's it's the E foot. So you can go back to the A to Z with Janome episode, the E episode, and um, see me uh, put in some zippers using that foot. Uh, this is our B, the buttonhole foot. Again, I demonstrated that on Janome HQ, uh, A to Z with Janome. Go back to the Janome HQ YouTube channel to see those videos. That's a B for a uh, buttonhole foot, so I could put in a uh, buttonhole whatever size I want, or I could also use this as a um, foot for decorative stitches. It's very similar to our uh, F foot in that it's got the little grooves in the bottom for the decorative stitches. Oh, we've got a G foot, which is the blind hem foot. Now this one is cool because it's got a little uh, wheel. Let's see, I need to position this so it doesn't fall forward. <laughs> this is where, Dotania, I need you. Uh, so there, it's got this little wheel. So then again, I can move that little guide closer to my needle. So this foot not only is useful to do blind hems, but you could also just use that little guide uh, to put up against the side of your fabric. So again, how cool is that? So multi-purpose little G foot there. Oh, lovely. Hello, Luciano. Hello. It is great to see you all. Thank you everyone for joining me. Uh, and then we have a sliding buttonhole foot. This is similar to our automatic uh, uh, buttonhole foot, but slightly different. And this is, you'll see it says J, it's the J foot. So I'm actually gonna demo how to use this foot. And we're gonna talk about some buttonholes. Cause yes, if you'll see on this machine, it's got a four step buttonhole. So it will go down one side doing the little zigzag stitches. It'll go across doing the bar tack at the end. It'll go up the opposite side doing the little uh, zigzag stitches. And then it's gonna go across again, the bar tack to finish it off. So very simple, very basic, but again, very uh, handy in when you need to do a buttonhole. And again, on my 28-year-old machine, I had exactly this, the four-step uh, buttonhole, and I completed my garments for school uh, with those four-step buttonholes, even though at school we had a very fancy, dedicated buttonhole machine. And I did some of my buttonholes on that fancy industrial buttonhole machine, and I did some of my buttonholes on my little mechanical Janome machine. And, you know, I don't know that my teacher even really uh, knew or paid attention. They were, they were all professionally done, which was the, the main thing. So it didn't matter that one was done on um, my little Janome machine or one was done on an expensive machine. They both had the same beautiful results. And that's what's most important in the long run. They, they, they have to look good. And they certainly do.
Uh, yes, this machine also has a free arm, so that's great when you got little, uh, you know, tight areas. Uh, in the back here, we've got a little lever that will uh, lower the feed dog, so then yes, if you want to do some free motion quilting, you certainly can. Uh, a little side thread cutter, as always. And then here, we've got a dial for our uh, foot pressure. So our presser foot pressure. So we can adjust this. Oh, sorry, I should use my other hand. <laughs> uh, we can adjust this. The manual says to, you know, have your usual at number three, which would be up here, but then to lighten it, then I can turn it down. There's two or there's a one. So again, on uh, pretty much all of our machines, we can uh, adjust pressure. So again, consult your manual. Perfect. Yay. So, oh, wonderful. Thank you. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, perseverance is a good thing. Uh, so yes, uh, as I was saying, all Janome machines, regardless of price point, uh, are all going to be on this cast aluminum base. So they're very sturdy. And then again, all the pretty pieces are added to them uh, later. So yes, this fabulous machine, again, will do beautiful buttonholes, beautiful stitching. Uh, just like all Janome machines, I need to get further back so you can all see. Uh, yeah, so when I want to do some easy stitching, and again, I'm just going to turn this all back, that we can adjust whatever kind of stitch we want here with our stitch uh, selection. So right now, I just have it at a... A, so that's just like a normal straight stitch. And then again, I can line up, oh, there's the five eighths of an inch line on my uh, machine here. And then away I go. So, so simple, so easy. So nice and beautiful, nice and smooth. And then a side cutter, which is very convenient. So then that's my beautiful straight stitch. But oh yes, if I want to do some, again, let's say buttonholes, then what I need to do is, again, the instruction manual tells you all, but then I just follow the uh, diagram here and the diagram here to say, oh yes, I just need to do number one to go down the one side. So then I'm going to snap on, and like most Janome machines, the uh, snap-on presser feet just come on and off with that little black button at the back. So this sliding buttonhole foot, uh, it comes with a number of our machines, and it has this little red arrow. So this is like the, the back of the foot. So I clip it on, the needle is where that little arrow is, and then this is going to move forward. So we have up until about uh, an inch and a quarter to do buttonholes, uh, again about an inch and a quarter with this foot. But if you want something bigger, then that's when you ooh, can go use your B buttonhole foot and do the buttonhole whatever size you wish. So that's very good. So I just quickly snap this on. And then when I do buttonholes, and some people really struggle with this, so this is where uh, I thought I would give you all some tips. So when we do buttonholes, then we want to make sure that the buttonhole is big enough. Uh, again, this is our button and then again we measure it with our little gauge so not only we need a buttonhole for the width of that button but also like a little bit extra to accommodate for the depth of that button and you've all seen maybe you all have worn or you've made a garment where the button hole is just too tight and then it ends up um, you know puckering the the seam puckering the garment there's a lot of wear and tear right around the buttonholes so if you make your buttonhole just a little smidge longer like an eighth of an inch longer then you'll be able to accommodate again the depth of that button and particularly, oh, if you've got a shank button here, then yes, you need your buttonhole to be a little bit bigger, not only the width of the button, but to again accommodate that shank. So it needs to be a little bit bigger. So I have my fabric uh, marked here just with these pins. 
and I'm not going to sew over the pins, though very important. So I have them like way off to the left here, but they're just to to mark of this is the the length of my buttonhole. Now a big uh, trouble when when people are doing buttonholes and they say, oh my fabric just isn't feeding well. Well there, this is my stabilizer that I have in between uh, your button placket, uh, if this were a garment, would be, chances are, interfaced as according to your pattern. Uh, but I also like having some, uh, this is some tearaway stabilizer that will help uh, feed my button, uh, my fabric uh, easier and the buttonhole will turn out very good. And of course where I get that stabilizer, oh yes, is our Madeira stabilizer starter kit. Yes, this is why I love this. Again, we got 12 different stabilizers to experiment with, a little booklet to describe exactly how to use these stabilizers. So I like having some uh, tearaway stabilizer under my fabric, and this is like a stretchy uh, velvet, a stretch velvet. So sometimes, ooh, knits, uh, buttonholes on knits can be a little tricky, but by having that stabilizer, on the bottom will help. And then when I make my adjustment on my machine, again, I go to number one, it's gonna do that long satin stitch and I turn my length dial, but instead of doing it a really tight uh, satin stitch, I'm gonna do it slightly bigger. So it's over to the, the right of that dial. And why I'm going to do that, once I get this all lined up, so once I, uh, and the reason why I'm going to do that uh, slightly bigger zigzag. Oh, can you all see what I'm doing there? <laughs> and again, I'm not sewing over my pins. They're way over here to the left, but they're just marking on my fabric where I need to stop. Now, when I'm going to turn the dial over, I want to make sure that the needle is up out of the fabric because now I'm going to turn this dial to number two and it's going to swing the needle back and forth to do the bar tack. And you just need to go back over a couple of times, maybe, you know, like five or six times. And then you're going to click the dial to three to then send the machine going back. And, and again, by having that uh, tearaway stabilizer on the bottom really helps it feed very smoothly. And again, I want to make sure to raise the needle up um, before I turn the dial, like there, to number four. And then that's going to do the bar tack going back and forth. So when you get your machine home, I always suggest to people get the instruction manual, get a cup of tea, get a cup of coffee, and go through your manual and do these, uh, uh, each stitch, you know, one by one by one, do tons of samples. So you really get comfortable with the machine. So after I do that little bar tacking, then I'm going to turn my dial just down to zero. So I'm not really going to stitch. Uh, anywhere I'm not going to travel, I'm just going to do a couple of really tight stitches just to kind of help lock it off. And then I'm going to raise my foot. And then there is my beautiful buttonhole. And you see by having these pins way out to the side, I didn't stitch over the pin, but it helped me line up how big my buttonhole is. Now these are these cute little mini duckling scissors that I've been showing a lot on Genomi HQ. So those are adorable. I love to trim very close. And then again, this stabilizer, I can just rip off easily. Now, um, where this stabilizer came from, again, I use this stabilizer a lot for uh, embroidery. So I always save these little uh, cast off. Now, the stabilizer also comes in black. So in this case, oh, I'd probably use black. Uh, but then I can go back in with my stiletto and, you know, go and rip off the rest of that and then trim. Or again, it's ultimately just paper. So even if I wet this, it will um, eventually dissolve and, and come away. But so there is my beautiful buttonhole. Now to trim it, there's many different like buttonhole punches out there. 
Uh, or you could use a seam ripper, but what I love using, ooh, these very sharp, there's a little plastic cap that comes with these little sharp Janome scissors. And I love using these to get in to trim my buttonhole, to open up my buttonhole. Uh, they've got a very sharp point so I can really get in there, but then I'm not gonna trim my satin stitch. So where these cute little Janome scissors have come from, oh, is this beautiful Janome scissor case. The nine piece uh, Janome scissors uh, that even comes with uh, the tweezers and the surgical seam ripper. It's a gorgeous case. Again, you can order this from your Janome dealer, but it has so many useful big shears and then even again little um, scissors like this with the sharp point so those are great to open your buttonholes so there then my buttonhole oh is done so it's beautiful and by having the zigzag to see like the more open zigzag so that way there's still stretch to this buttonhole uh, i did a bunch of various sizes here this is more of a thicker like scuba knit but again, look at those stitches. Came out beautiful. I've got white in my bobbin and I've got yellow uh, iris uh, polyester embroidery thread. Now, typically I will use embroidery thread for my buttonholes and I would, in this case, I would match it. I would put the yellow uh, in here uh, as well to match it. Um, and I like using the embroidery thread because then again, it makes your buttonhole look more pronounced. It, it's more special. Um, so then... Um, it, it becomes like a feature or again you could use like white embroidery or black embroidery thread to blend in your fabric or in this case I thought why not uh, make a element out of these buttonholes uh, but again by having that more open zigzag do you see like I still have stretch in this fabric and no popping of the seams so this way then the buttons easily gonna go through and it's not gonna stretch out that buttonhole so that's very good to remember. And then, oh, there's many different stabilizers. This one is Avalon Fix, and it's actually a sticky back stabilizer that comes on paper like this, but the back is sticky. So I have it in between layers, actually. But again, typically on garments, we would have the interfacing within the button placket. And then this uh, sticky stabilizer I would even have on the on the back side to help again stabilize but still um, allow a little bit of stretch in that buttonhole but you know we could also do corded buttonholes we have these little grooves on your buttonhole foot here that has a little finger on the back side and we take our this case is just like a, a heavier floss and we just clip it around into, oops, into uh, these prongs at the front. I don't want to get it twisted. These prongs there at the front of the buttonhole foot. So then we can do that same buttonhole over this thicker floss. So it looks like that. And then again, we would just pull this on one end and then we could thread up a needle and bury these in between layers take them to the back side uh, or if you just want to take your again mini duckbill scissors so i know i'm not going to trim my lower layer of fabric you can really just trim these off flush and put a little bit of you know seam sealant there and then boom there's your corded buttonhole so again, it adds a little bit more strength, a little bit more prominent. So great if you're gonna do, uh, oh, like a, a winter coat, some heavier fabric, uh, those corded buttonholes are good because then it's gonna stabilize. Even in this stretch of your fabric, it's gonna help stabilize the buttonhole. The rest of the fabric can still stretch as usual, but in the buttonhole, we don't want too much stretch in the knit fabric. So a corded buttonhole is good to prevent some of that stretch. Or again, your stickier Avalon Fix uh, stabilizer will help, uh, again, prevent some of that stretch. Uh, again, I was mentioning about, oh, when you've got your knits and you need like some interfacing, but you still want, again, that stretch. So I always love using this is a, a Trico knit interfacing. So it's got the stretch 
to it, the one side is all smooth and the other side is all bumpy. So that's the fusible side. And then again, you can still beef up your fabric, but it can still stretch. So that's always good to use. Now, sometimes, oh, I will use a water soluble stabilizer. And again, this comes from the Benira stabilizer pack. Uh, I'll use the water soluble stabilizer on top of the in this case a knit fabric, especially, oh, if it's a textured knit, if it's like a terry cloth or a boucle knit, then you don't want your needle getting stuck in there. So by having this water soluble layer on top, then you do your buttonhole through it and then again rip off the water soluble stabilizer. So that will help support the stitches and make everything feed so smoothly. Uh, this is where, because when you've got again thicker layers and you want everything to go smoothly, this is where again I will reduce in this case the, the presser foot pressure normally is a three and I reduced it even down to a one. So again, depending on the thickness of your fabric, you can adjust your presser foot pressure, probably, on your machine. And again, construct, um, consult your instruction manual on how you would do that. But uh, when you've got thicker layers, it's nice to have a little bit less pressure. So again, everything could feed very smoothly. Uh, the paper um, that you peel away, this is your piece of your Avalon Fix. And again, the paper, it's a sticky stabilizer, and the paper does uh, just peel away, if I can get it started. <laughs> and so, because nothing goes to waste, oh, there we go. So there, so the stabilizer is sticky on one side, this paper you just get rid of, but oh, because nothing goes to waste in my sewing room, you save that paper. And when you're doing your decorative stitches, you're practicing your decorative stitches, how about using that strip of paper to help support the decorative stitches of your machine. So again, nothing goes to waste. You're practicing, you're learning, you're seeing like that feather stitch, for example, that stitch is on so many Janome machines. So isn't that cool that you can do some decorative things, not only, uh, again, very utilitarian, uh, but decorative stitches too on this. Again, you've got 21 stitches to play with. Now these are the stretch stitches and oh yes, you can look, look at those stretch stitches and nothing is popping, nothing is gaping, not at all. But again, in your beautiful um, iris uh, polyester uh, embroidery thread or even Madeira uh, embroidery thread that I use a lot, like look how beautiful then these like triple zigzag can be a decorative stitch, not only a functional stitch. And even these are like blind hem stitches, but again, they, they end up looking decorative. Uh, when you are doing a blind hem, for example, that is the G foot, and I demonstrated how to do a blind hem on the A to Z with Janome series. And I often suggest, oh, you sew your seam, and then you come in again with your mini duckling scissors, and then you trim off. So if this was my five eighths of an inch seam allowance, we can do our uh, blind hem, and then we can come back in and then trim that hem close to our stitching line. So that makes it very easy. Everything lays nice and flat. Now, oh yes, and then stretch stitches, for example, like, oh, this stitch, uh, G, G. So then I just turn my dial to G, and then I turn this dial over, whoops. I turn this dial there, so it's stretch stitches, so G. So that is going to help me. Let me just grab a piece of fabric here. Oh, and I need a uh, presser foot. <laughs> there we go. So this stitch is great to finish off your knit seam. It um, mimics a serger. It's the same kind of stitch that you would be able to do with your serger. Uh, or very similar. So then I can do my stitch. Oops. And this, I think I'm going to go back to normal. As far as uh, the pressure, I'm going to increase the pressure. So as I'm feeding this through, 
And another tip I like doing uh, with knits, I love these clips. So not only do I clip here at the side, but I clip here at the bottom to make sure that nothing uh, goes out of whack. Now you can also get a uh, walking foot or an even feed foot. So I won't sew the whole seam, but you see, ooh, how beautiful that is. So there it's sewing my seam and it's like helping to finish that edge, secure that edge. But again, I can go back in with my mini duckling scissors and trim that off nice and easy. And again, nobody would even see, even with that yellow uh, thread, like, oh my gosh, you don't even like, I've got to really pull that seam in order to see that thread. So again, you can see it's very secure. And look at that stretch. It's got the built-in stretch to that seam. So you don't have to worry about anything popping. Again, there's another one all finished. I even did some edge stitching there. And again, nothing is popping, nothing is moving. So that's great. Uh, you can even... Again, use the stitches like E and F, again, that are like overcast stitches that, that mimic, again, like a serger finishing off that raw edge. And again, the same thing, I like to stitch not right on the edge of my, whoops, sorry. I like to stitch right on the edge, or not right on the edge of my fabric. I like to stitch a little bit over. And then I come in again with my little scissors and trim that all nice and neat. So all this extra stitching is gonna stop the raveling. So really good to use. And even though, again, it says it's a straight stitch or a stretch stitch, I can still use it on a woven fabric, no problem. And again, it, it could even become a decorative stitch. So there's lots of versatility utility to a machine like this, even though, again, technically one might think, oh, well, it's very basic and very simple. But yes, there's a lot you can do with it. That's where your creativity comes in. And then, yes, oh, you look, you can get some beautiful accessories like, oh, yes, if you want to do free motion quilting, you can get like a darning foot. Uh, this is the PDH foot that I demoed on the A to Z with Janome series. So you can get this to do some free motion quilting. Or there's your traditional G blind hem foot that you could also get if you'd rather use one that looks like that. Or yes, I can get a O foot, the quarter inch foot with the guide here. Uh, there's so many, your uh, over edge foot, your, your C foot you can get, or your rolled hem foot. There's the button sewing foot, the T foot. So you can get all these extra um, accessories. Oh, things like this button shank plate help when you're going to sew on buttons by machine to give you that uh, depth of the shank. But also I use this uh, for uh, thicker layers when I need to keep the presser foot level. Uh, I've got a video on Janome HQ, a YouTube channel of Janome sewing uh, tips and tricks, and I show how to use this button shank plate, as it's called. Uh, many people call it by different names, but the official name is button shank plate. And this, I again, uh, use it to keep the presser foot level when I'm sewing through multiple layers. So you can go back to Janome HQ YouTube to find that. Uh, things like this uh, quilting guide bar. I love, and again, optional accessory it comes with many machines as well. But then, yes, we can just slide it through the foot holder, the regular foot holder. And then there I've got an adjustable guide when I want to do rows of uh, decorative stitches or I want to do, again, rows of uh, quilting. I've got this quilting guide bar that you can get as an additional accessory from your Janome dealer. Or I love this cloth guide that this, with the big screw, screws into, some of our machines have a hole in the needle plate and others have the hole out here in the bed of the machine. And this is what that hole is for, is for certain attachments to then screw in things like this cloth guide. So again, I can position this exactly where I need. Oh, five eighths of an inch if I want to do, again, a commercial pattern or if I'm sewing a home deck pro uh, project is normally about half of an inch. Uh, or again, I can line this up to do like a quarter of an inch. There's so many ways you can use this uh, cloth guide that again is a 
optional accessory that you can get from your Janome dealer. And then you can check out, oh yes, the accessories guide that on our uh, genomi.ca website, our Genomi Canada website, we've got the bilingual accessories guide that you can find out. Again, it lists all the accessories that you can get with your various machines. So you can check that out. And again, order all those from your Genomi dealer. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, the machine does come with a secondary spool pin that just clicks up here. So again, great when you want to wind your bobbin so you don't have to unthread your regular uh, needle thread here. Uh, great if you're going to use a twin needle. Uh, I did a um, demo of twin needle sewing on the 6700P episode. So again, go back to Genome H. Q YouTube to check that out about all uh, the details of using a twin needle. But also that little hole up at the top of the machine where this uh, secondary spool pin goes, you can also get these adorable little pin cushions that will sit in where that hole is. So you could get an adorable little pin cushion like that for your Janome machine. And also I wanted to show you before we go again, oh, I could sit here all day and talk about how great this machine is. Look at this. Yes, I mentioned this on Genomi HQ Facebook. And yes, we have also from your Genomi dealer, you can check, look at this gorgeous 100 year Genomi fabric. This fabric is similar to what we have in the Genomi masks that you can get from your dealer, similar to the Aero chair fabric, uh, but this one specifically is 100 years Janome that, yes, uh, Janome is 100 years this year. So certainly lots of reason to celebrate. And we at Janome have lots planned to show you some fabulous uh, new things to celebrate and just in general a celebration all year. Uh, so yes, who doesn't love that? So this way, again, you can show your Janome love, wear your Janome love, whatever you'd like to do. This is regular um, cotton uh, quilting fabric. You can maybe see the salvage there. Janome sewing, it's made by uh, Benertex. Uh, they do all the fabric for my idol, Eleanor Burns from Quilt in a Day. So again, Benertex has been around forever uh, in the uh, quilting world doing all this uh, beautiful beautiful cotton uh, quilting fabric. So yes, this is available from your Janome dealer. And doesn't it go good with things like, oh yes, these red bobbins <laughs> that are also beautiful uh, that again, you could order from your Janome dealer. So I like using these, for example, when I'm going to use, oh, like the decorative threads, like the, um, you know, uh, polyester embroidery threads that I would wind on these red bobbins, let's say. So then I know, great, if it's on a red bobbin, I know it's polyester embroidery thread. So that is fabulous. Oh, Census Leia has two of those pin cushions. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, they are so cute and again, so handy. So yes, again, as always, I could go on and talk forever about the fabulousness and versatility of this Janome Sewist 721. But I see, as usual, time is racing away, so let me flip this around. I am so sorry for having uh, lost the sound uh, earlier. Again, I think I hit my... Um, microphone and, and a little cable came out. So the main thing is it got it resolved, but now I know for future, don't touch those, uh, those controls. So lovely. Oh, thank you everyone. So yes, for those who have tuned in late, you can always go back to the IGTV icon that's at the Genome HQ uh, Instagram page. So you can see this presentation again, or in a couple of days, I'll load this at the uh, Genome HQ YouTube channel. And I always add like a title and some music and then I, I cut out the beginning portion of me saying hi to everybody and everything. <laughs> so I try to condense it a little smaller, but again, I could talk forever. So thank you everyone for joining me today. I will let you go. Have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you all again. I hope at next week for another Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. So thank you everyone and enjoy your day. Bye. <music>